Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 4, which is Introduction to Organic Chemistry. We're going to focus on the subtopic of 4.3, which is Isomerism, part 3 of this video. So in this video, we're going to look into the definition of the chirality center as well as enantiomer. We're also going to identify the chirality center in the molecule, where the chirality center means that it is a carbon atom attached with four different groups with four different groups or atom all right so the carbon chain for example the carbon atom here is attached with four different species like a b c or d okay it needs to be different all around and we're also going to look into the optical activity where the optical activity can only occurs when the molecule is chiral okay and for part i we're going to draw a pair of enantiomers using three dimensional formula where it is restricted to one chirality center so just now we're going to do the 2d structure first and lastly we're going to draw a pair of enantiomers um, using a 3d structure for one chirality center. So to understand more about this, uh, let us start. So for optical isomerism, it basically refers to the optical activity, which is the ability of a certain substance to rotate the plane polarized light. Okay, so the substance that can rotate the plane polarized light, so this is the plane polarized light. Okay. So the substance that can rotate it, so that they can rotate and give an angle here, it's said to be an optically active compound. So the compound that, or the substance that can rotate the plane polarized light is known as the chiral substance. Alright, so chirality um, only occurs when the molecule contains at least one chiral carbon. As mentioned, the chiral carbon is a carbon atom attached to four different atoms or group of atoms. Let's say the carbon here. So the carbon here is attached with hydrogen, attached with metal group CH3, attached to OH, and attached to ethyl, which is CH2CH3. So we can say that this carbon here is a chiral carbon. And this is uh, because it is attached with four different carbon. So this is in the drawing in the 2D form. Later, you will learn how to draw it in the 3D form. So you can convert that into 3D by maintaining CH in plane. So two of the bond is in, in plane. And for example, OH here, you're going to do it out of plane. And one of the bond which is the metal group here to be below the plane okay so this is like a bayang bayang so behind the plane and the ball and thick wedge here means out of the plane all right and this is also labeled as a star here or asterisk okay so asterisk a-S-T-E-R-I-S-K or a star which refers that it is a chiral carbon. So, chirality center as mentioned is an sp3 hybridized carbon atom. So, it needs to be like this. So, it is an sp3 carbon atom with four different group of atoms or group of atom atoms attached to it. So, let us look into the example here. So we need to determine the chirality center for this molecule. So the first thing first, you need to find where is the carbon atom. So we have one carbon atom here, one carbon atom here, one carbon atom here, and one carbon atom here. Okay, so in for this carbon atom, it is attached with the metal group, attached with hydrogen, and attached with the NHTH3 here. For this carbon, Okay, and this carbon also is attached to it, all of this thing. So we can say that this carbon 
is a chiral carbon because it attached with four different groups. Okay, and at the same time, this carbon are also a chiral carbon because it attached with one different group, two different group, three different group, and four different group. Okay, so we have two chiral carbon. However, this is not chiral carbon because it is attached with the same species, which is H, H, and another H. So you know that this is not a chiral carbon. Okay, not chiral carbon. Same goes to here, carbon here, not chiral carbon. So we have only two chirality center, which is at this point and at this point. All right. Now we're going to look into the chirality in the cyclic compound. So to determine whether a ring carbon is chiral, look for any difference in the path around the ring in each direction. Example, we have the methyl cyclopentane. So methyl cyclopentane is drawn to be like this. And we will suspect that is this a chiral carbon? So we are asking ourselves whether this is a chiral carbon or not. So we know that this is different and this is different. How about the other two here? So what we're going to do is we're going to investigate it one by one. Okay, so from here, the carbon here is identical group. So we move on when here is the same and here is the same. We move on into the next carbon here here and also here okay so when it moves on to the next carbon and to the next carbon until the cyclic is end you can see that it is both identical so you can say that it is not a chiral carbon because the carbon here is attached to the same thing same goes to here okay now we're going to look into example number two which is three methyl cyclohexane so we will suspect this carbon here to be a chiral carbon or not. We know that H and CH3 is already different. So we're going to look into the carbon change in the cyclic compound. So here and here. So we can see that it is not identical because one is has a double bond and one is in a single bond. So you can know that carbon here is attached with different group, attached to a different group, attached to a different group, attached to a different group. So you can say that the carbon here is a chiral carbon. So you label it with the star or asterisk. Now looking into example number three. So this example here is a 3-methyl cyclohexanol. So the same tag, the same thing. Um, whether you whether you suspect this carbon is a chiral carbon or not, so it is attached with hydrogen, which is different with CH three. So you're gonna look into the sequence. So here and here, single bond and single bond, carbon and carbon. So we can say that it is identical group. So we couldn't justify anything. At kita tak boleh katakan apa apa lagi pasal masih sama. So, kita pergi kepada carbon seterusnya. So, we move on to the next carbon. Here and here. So, at this point, we can see that the carbon are not identical. Alright? So, when it is not identical, you can say that this carbon here, it is a chiral carbon. Okay? At first, they are not. At first, they are similar. But up to the next, they are already unidentical. So, the whole thing here, is different and the old then here is also different so different group different group different group and different group so you can say that it is a chiral carbon and you mark it as asterisk now we move on into the enantiomer so a molecule that contains a chiral carbon okay so molecule yang ada chiral carbon will have a mirror image okay contohnya di sini so for this compound um, here it is a chiral has a chiral carbon because it attached with a different group of atom okay and if we were to place it in front of the mirror 
it will create a mirror image. Okay, yang warna hijau di depan akan menghasilkan yang di depan. Yang kuning akan menghasilkan yang kuning. And the blue one will create a blue one. And the red one will create a mirror image of the red one. Or you can imagine it to be your hand. Alright, so your thumb here going to be your metal. And if you have a mirror in the middle, you will create another mirror image of your uh, right hand and left hand. Okay. And what it means by superimpose here. Okay. Superimpose here means bertindih. So mirror image, dihasilkan adalah tidak boleh bertindih. So as what you can see here, my right hand and my left hand, dia tidak bertindihan. Pasal, Ibu jari tadi terkeluar dan ibu jari di sini pun terkeluar. So, it is a non-superimposable mirror image. So, a chiral molecule and its mirror image, okay, chiral molecule tadi dan dia punya mirror image, dua-dua ini dinamakan sebagai enantiomers. Alright. Let us look into the example. For example, butan to all. So, if we were to draw the 2D structure here, we will have CH3, CH, CH2 and CH3. And OH here is attached at carbon number 2. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, the longest carbon chain is 4, which is butane. And because, if, because we have hydroxyl group at carbon number 2, it becomes 2 butanol. Or we can write this as butan to all. Okay, now this is in the 2D structure. But in order to draw enantiomer, we have to draw it in terms of 3D. So we know that this is the chiral carbon because it attached with four different group of atom. So we can start with C first. Okay, and we can draw the C history here. And the line here refers to hydrogen. And what projected out of the plane is OH. And two of the species or two group here going to be in plane. So for enantiomer, kamu tahu tadi dia adalah one chiral carbon with the mirror image. Then only we call it enantiomer. So we have to put a mirror in the middle. So you will create another a compound that is mirror image to your chiral carbon here. So you still draw the carbon, uh, the carbon and the hydrogen is still maintained. Now, what is near to the mirror will be created near to the mirror. Okay, and for OH, you will create the OH as well. And for CH3, the distance there, and you will go also to up to a certain distance to form a CH3. Alright? And the species of this thing and its mirror image is called as enantiomer. Alright? So you have to draw it in 3D and you have to draw a mirror and label it as enantiomer. Now, let us look into question number one. So we have to label star at the chiral carbon, which is refers to the chiral center in each of the following molecule. And also draw the enantiomer. So we have CH3, CH2, CH, CH3, which is I think the same question as just now. And this is the, um, the chiral center because it attached at four group. So you're going to draw it. So it's up to you to select which one is it in plane but the other two need to be below the plane and the other one is above the plane and you need to draw the mirror and you need to create a mirror image okay so what's near to the plane will be near to the plane OH we're going to be OH here and here we're going to be here okay now we move on to example B which is CH3, CHBR and CH2, CH3 so, if you were to draw in three in 2D, you will get the structure to be like this. So, we have C, H, P, R, 
and this C is attached with CH3. And this thing will be attached with CH2, CH3. So you know that the carbon here is going to be a chiral carbon because it attached with four different groups. Okay, now you draw it in 2D, but for enantioma, you have to draw it in 3D. So you're going to draw C here, H and CH2, CH3 to be in plane. And the dashed line here, which is refers to bayang bayang, which is behind the plane, belakang kertas. And BR, which is a bold line here, means it is above the paper. So in a paper, for example, this paper, you will have one bond coming up of the plane, coming out of the paper, and the other bond going below the paper. And now you want to create a mirror image. So, and this is the mirror image of the chiral compound that you have created. Okay. So you need to label it as enantial. Okay, and this is the overviews that we have learned in the subtopic of 4.3, where constitutional isomer, which is chain, positional, and functional group, we have learned in part 1, cis trans, we have learned in part 2, and in this video, you have learned about optical activity, which is the ability of a chiral carbon to rotate plain polarized light, and you also learned about the enantiomer where you have to draw it in 3D as well as the mirror image. So this you have learned in part 3. So part 1, part 2 and part 3 for isomer in the subtopic of 4.3. Alright, so I think that's all for this video. See you again some other time. Bye!